Started this week off with drinks with friends, and then we headed up to Eric Repair's new cookbook launch at Laverna Den, which was so fun because I got to see so many old friends. <laughs> Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> We're gonna try to make it to this party. We're gonna be like, there for the last five minutes. Here we go, there's caps, there's caps. We made it with one minute to spare. And that's very dark. <laughs> All right, we made it. The next day I went to Kinokuniya, the Japanese bookstore at Bryant Park in Midtown Manhattan. I love this store so much and I don't think I come here enough. I came to buy a notebook and a planner and then I met up with my sister for lunch at Heritage Bakery. She works in the neighborhood. I have been on a real stationary kick all week and I kind of forgot that college bookstores are the best place to go for notebooks and stationery. So I went to the NYU bookstores my first time. It is amazing, did not disappoint. I just got back from the NYU bookstore. I went specifically for one thing where I bought, well I bought two of them, but the other day I bought my niece and nephew Mad Libs and they're both kids, they're like under 10 years old. And it is my personal mission as an aunt to, I was describing this to my friends as Gen X trickle down know-how. I think there are a lot of things that we learned or we did in the 80s and 90s that kids these days just like don't do because they have access to way more interesting stuff. The internet, for example. But, um, and I think a lot of these things that we did in the 80s and 90s have sort of gotten lost and I want to in reintroduce them to the next generation. And since I don't have kids, I impose this on my brother's kids. Um, so I bought them Mad Libs this week. So I bought my niece a Matilda Mad Libs booklet and I bought my nephew a Pokemon one. And yesterday I showed them like how to do Mad Libs and they learned what nouns are, what nouns are and what verbs are and adjectives and plural. And they seem to really enjoy it. I think kids that age really like silly things. So filling in silly words and making things just not make sense. Anyway, I also think that kids these days don't have access to dictionaries because as I just learned today, normal mainstream bookstores like Barnes & Noble, even in New York City, you can't buy a dictionary in the store, in the brick and mortar store. You can order it on the internet easily but you can't just walk in and buy it because they don't stock dictionaries and neither does The Strand, which is the other bookstore I go to all the time. So I looked around and I realized I live not too far from the NYU bookstore and I've never been there before. So that's why I went to the NYU bookstore. And of course, because it's a college bookstore, it has all the reference books. So I bought them both. Cute little editions of the Merriam-Webster dictionary, which is the only one it's the only one they had. They didn't have the Oxford. They No, they did have an Oxford English Dictionary, but it was massive, and these are for little kids. Um, and at, for a, a minute, I was thinking about buying them the pocket version of this dictionary, but the pocket version was last updated in 2006, and these were last updated in 2022. So if you think about how much the world has changed in between 2006 and 2022, I had to get these. So I got these, hopefully they'll like them. Um, my niece always says she wants to be a writer and I hope to wow her with 75,000 words in one book. Yesterday, I've been on a big stationary kick the past two days and I think the reason is, is I've been thinking about writing fiction. I've been thinking about writing fiction for a long time, for decades. I have folders and folders full of notes and anecdotes and scenes and stories that I've been putting together and trying to like get to click for more than 10 years. So 
I think now I actually have some free time now. I'm sort of have like I'm lighter in my client consulting work right, right now. So I thought I might try to get back into that mindset of writing fiction. So I, this is sort of like um, this is like working out for me. I'm very gear driven. If I find myself lapsing in going to the gym or getting my steps in, if I buy a new pair of sneakers or a new pair of running pants, then I'm way more likely to get back on the treadmill. Same thing with writing. So yesterday I went to Kino Kunia, that Japanese bookstore in Midtown Manhattan. I think they're all over the US actually. I looked on their website and it looks like all of their other branches are way nicer than the Manhattan branch, but that's like the story of New York. You come to New York and you sort of think that New York stores and flagships will be the best and the most beautiful, but actually not. And <laughs> I realized this when I started crocheting and I realized that everyone else's Michael's craft store was way nicer than the New York City one. The New York City one is in a basement on 6th Avenue in Chelsea underneath the Trader Joe's. Like that's the New York City Michael's. Of course, there are other Michael's in Queens and Brooklyn, but in Manhattan, that's our Michael's. And I love it and I think it's great and they do a great job of staffing it and stocking it and they have all this stuff on time and they have plenty of it, but it's nowhere near as glossy and fancy and beautiful as these giant suburban Michael's that I see all over YouTube. Anyway, I went to Kinokuniya. I bought some things, including double-ended crochet hooks, from Japan. I really like Japanese crochet hooks. I think they're not expensive and they're made really well and I like how they're a little bit pointier at the end and they're more ergonomic to me than just the regular craft hooks that I buy at Michael's. So I bought a few of those to try them out and then I saw this on YouTube so I wanted to pick one up and I felt so lucky to get there when I did because this was the last one left. This is the Hobonichi Kecho planner and it's for 2024. I have been using Smithson planners. They're not really planners. They're really just diaries with like dates and I, I like a day per page calendar. I've been using Smithson's for the past six or seven years and I love them because the paper is so nice to write on. It's so smooth. It's beautiful. So you feel like you're having a really nice experience every time you're writing in them but they are really expensive. So the Smithson notebook that I want to get for next year, I looked, the prices also go up every year. So this year it's $285 for a diary and I can't really justify it. Last year I bought one because I happened to be in England and it's way cheaper to buy English products in England. So I picked one up because it was maybe like 40% less than ordering in the United States. So I had a Smithson this year. I loved it, but I saw this online and I thought I would try it. I haven't opened it up because I'm not sure yet if I'll use the, the Hobonichi. If you are interested in a new way of thinking about your planner or how to organize your week, your month, your day, take a look online. It's a really interesting layout. It has a monthly layout, a weekly layout, and I bought the one that has a day per page as well. It's graph paper on the inside, which to be honest, I'm not crazy about. I don't really like writing on graph paper, but it is so light. The lines are so light, so I thought it maybe it'd be okay. But there are all these accessories that go with it to really help you get organized. You can buy tabs, you can buy um, like blotters, you can buy stickers and and just different kinds of things for annotation. So when you look online, especially on Instagram, you can see all the different creative ways that people have adapted the Hobonichi layout to their lives, which I'm excited to consider it. I did panic buy it because it was the last one. So it may have just been an impulse purchase and they actually buy a Smyson, we'll see. I also picked this up yesterday at Kinokuniya. There are a lot of notebooks from Japan where the paper is super nice. And I thought I would try this one. This is, I've never, I don't know what this brand is. This is a Kokuyo notebook. It's quite big. It's, I think this might be an A4. It's an A4. It's perforated. I personally really like a narrow ruled page. I don't like a wide ruled page. I think if there's too much white space when I write on it. I like a narrow rule and it's really important to me and I don't know why I think this might just be because I'm used to this, this is how these are the notebooks I used growing up. 
in the 80s and 90s, I feel like all of our notebooks had a margin line. So I always look for notebooks that have a margin line here. A lot of notebooks that you can buy in the States, like at CVS and stuff like that, and even notebooks that you buy in England. I always shop for notebooks at WH Smith, and when I go to England, they don't have that margin. I just like it because I think it looks neat. All your writing lines up on the left side, and you can also make notes in the margin, which I found really helpful. Today, at the NYU bookstore, in addition to the dictionaries, I also picked up this, which I love this size. In America, obviously, we don't use A4, A5, A6. I don't know what this size is called. I threw away the label already. I don't know if this size has a name. It's nine and three quarter inches by seven and a half inches. Doesn't have a cool name. But um, this is a Mead notebook with a flexi cover, which is so durable. This is also, I mean, this is college ruled, but I don't remember college ruled being this wide. It's definitely wider than narrow ruled. But it's, it's fine. It also has that margin, which I really like. I think I just wanted to get this and try it. I generally tend to like either notebooks that are bound so you can open them flat, which this is not. This is more of like just a... I mean, it's, it's sewn together, but it has this thing where it's sort of... You see, it's it does that. It doesn't lie flat. Or I like a spiral. I actually really like a spiral. I also bought these at Kinokuniya. I love clips. Instead of stapling papers, and I thought these are so clever because you can clip them together. There's a little ridge. Every other week, I feel like I fall off the gym bandwagon. So the important thing is that I get back on the wagon. And here I am at my gym doing a light leg day. It felt really good to get back and I really, really love going to the gym, so I don't know why I fall off the wagon at all. And then I got a delicious green mint smoothie from Juice Press. One of my favorites. Okay, so I caved early and I started using the Hobonichi. It is wonderful, and now I'm going to invest in a whole bunch of accessories to use, including a pencil board and some dividers. <laughs> This weekend, some friends and I made plans to meet up for an early dinner at Estella. It was my first time ever eating at Estella, and it is so good, so delicious. Everything was so wonderful. Afterwards, we went across the street to Angelica for an opening weekend showing and panel talk of an amazing new musical movie, and I don't think I can say the name on this video, but it is on screen right now. It is hilarious. Should we kiss and start a rumor we're dating? Send this to Doom Wah. <laughs>